our re review of uh, a, a certain database that uh, we are able to show that having a resident participate in an operation does have an impact on patient outcome. Uh, depends on the operation, uh, depends on whether it's a very technically driven operation, depends on the level of resident that is participating. Um, there are some beneficial effects of residents. For example, if you look at uh, res what's called rescue, rescue is the relationship between a patient that, that has a complication and then may die from that complication. That's called failure, failure to rescue. If you have a complication and you live, that's called rescue. And if you have residents, you tend to rescue more patients, which is good. On the other hand, uh, if you have a very technical operation uh, and the resident does the technical part, uh, if they're not proficient, you may have a worse outcome for the patient. Because we know that residents have an impact on patient care, I think it, it is our responsibility as teachers to make sure we are teaching to the specific points of the operation where the critical technical part is made. So for example, if I know on a hernia repair there's a certain suture that the most of the operation is dependent on, that I have to verify that, that suture is placed correctly or I have to do it myself. And so as a teacher, I can do it either way. If, if the resident has done it and I can verify it's perfect, great. If I can't verify it's perfect, I have to do it myself. I think that's what patients expect, and that's what we have to, that's, that's how we interact education and patient care at the same time. I think it depends on the field you want to go into, and I'll use surgery just as an example. Um, I think if you look at people who have had successful academic careers in the United States, for example, uh, it's a combination of excellence all across their training. Um, if they went to a very, very uh, prominent medical school, it's important, although if you excel at a lot of medical schools, you can get to where you want to be academically. I think getting great uh, postgraduate training is, is essential. You have to go to high quality residency and a residency that exposes you to research and then it allows you to get the fellowship that you want. Uh, because in, in the United States, 80% of uh, surgeons, for example, do fellowships. Um, it's different in different subspecialties, but fellowships are really a major part of, of people's uh, training. Uh, we recommend that if you're really interested in academics, you're going to be involved with research. You should be involved with research in medical school, in residency, and then when you finish. So we think that if you look at successful careers, folks are involved with research all along their training, not just in certain spots. Well, I think the, the first thing is you've got to ask an important question. A journal paper has to ask something. You have to have a thought. I want to know the answer to something, but that has to be an important question. If it's not an important question, and, and what's important? Well, the important question is if you've answered it, that's valuable to somebody's care or, or line of research. If you answer the question and everybody says, so what? you haven't an asked a valuable question. So uh, uh, hypothesis valuable question is important. You have to have designed an experiment that answers that question. I think the problem with some papers is they ask the question, but then they design it, uh, an experiment that actually doesn't actually answer the central question. So you have to design it, uh, the, design the right the design for the question. And then the, the design has to be such that you can answer the question. If you don't have enough patience, sometimes you can't answer the question. Uh, if you haven't designed it in a randomized way, sometimes it doesn't answer the question. So you have to have the right to study design that answers that question. And then you have to have usually some sort of uh, statistical background that is appropriate so you can use statistics to then validate your experiment. And then you have to be able to draw conclusions that make sense. And, and a lot of papers I read, you, you read about one topic, but then in the discussion, they're drawing conclusions that are random and unrelated. So uh, your, your, your discussion has to be very geared to what you just said in your methods and results. And I think, you know, if you do all that, you end up with a pretty good paper.